Then the second reading, and then after that, that's when this comes in, that you were just showing me. Yeah, see? This is the theater. Oh, you're the the two of you are two of Good evening. I'm going to ask again this evening if we can join each other in community so that we're not as far apart from each other. If you feel like moving, and if not, just a suggestion. Thank you.
Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection, sanctify your servants for whom Christ your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. For those who have been told shall see, and those who have heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hid their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet, it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured. While we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted, but he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes were we healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. <clears throat> Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before the shearers, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away, and who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sins of his people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers. Though he had done no wrong, nor spoken any falsehood, but the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gave his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in the fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils of the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked, and he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
from the clutch of foes you rescued me A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been similarly tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John.
Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to him, said to them, whom are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he again asked them, Who, whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into your saber. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? soldiers and tribune and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law to Cleophas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who was counseled, who had counseled the Jews, that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid, who was the gatekeeper, said to Peter, You are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around the coal fire that had been made because it was cold and they were warming themselves. Peter was standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his doctrine. Jesus answered, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in the synagogues or in the temple area where all the Jews gather. And in secret I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what heard what I said. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Anna sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there warming himself, and they said to him, Are you not one of the, his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. 
one of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one who, who, whose ear Peter had cut off, said, didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. And immediately the cock crowed. Jesus, you are truly the Savior of the world. Jesus, you are truly the Savior of the world. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium. It was now morning. And they themselves did not enter the Praetorium in order not to be defiled so that they could eat the Passover. Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, saying, We do not have the right to execute anyone, fulfilling Jesus' words indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. Pilate asked, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For I was born and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him. You have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you this king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this one, but Barabbas. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and mocked him, Hail, king of the Jews! and they struck him repeatedly. Once more, Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. And Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he made himself the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid and went back into the praetorium and questioned Jesus, where are you from? 
Jesus did not answer him. Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you? I have the power to crucify you. And Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but that he said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be in order that the passage of scripture might be fulfilled that says, they divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, 
I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a sponge soaked in the wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you may also come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths, along with the spices, according to Jewish burial customs. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord.
sisters and brothers, let us lift up our prayer proclaiming Jesus as the way that leads to the fullness of life, the truth that cannot be silenced, the final word of a gracious God who calls us to life beyond the tomb and brings forth the reign of God. For believers and non-believers, For all who believe in God, regardless of how God is named, may we strive to live together in peace and harmony. For the Jewish people, may they continue to grow in their love of God and their faithfulness to the covenant. For the church, those who are baptized, and those who believe in Jesus and live the gospel message. For those who do not believe in God, may they be guided by their personal integrity to seek and live what is right and just. Let us join our prayer together Good and gracious God, your love is persistent for each and all of your children, Christian, Jew, Muslim, as well as those of other faiths and those who claim no faith. May we live with mutual respect in our words and deeds. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our brother. Amen for the global community. For people of every land and nation, may the goal of our economies, individually and mutually, be the sharing and just distribution of wealth and resources. For the people of every nation, culture, creed, color, gender, or sexual orientation, may we live in common care and concern for one another, and our differences, whatever they may be, enrich and not divide us. For people of all ages, from those who are children to those who are elderly, may we recognize the wisdom and dignity of one another and share our talents and skills for the good of all. For world leaders, May they work together to facilitate peace through dialogue and understanding and work for the rights and dignity of people who are oppressed and disregarded in all corners of our world. Let us join our prayer together. Life-giving and faithful God, carry us beyond apathy and ignorance, prejudice and bias. Pour out your kindness upon a diverse and often divided world, and gather us together with all our sisters and brothers throughout the world into the joy and peace of your love. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our brother. For the suffering world. For those suffering from starvation, malnutrition, and without access to fresh water. May we strive to provide sufficient food and water and address the political and social issues that result in hunger and the unjust distribution of food and resources. For those who are immigrants and refugees and victims of all forms of bias, prejudice, and discrimination. 
May they find welcoming countries, communities, and families <clears throat> in which to live with mutual respect and dignity. For those who are prisoners and those who are on death row, may we work to reform our criminal justice system with a focus on reform and rehabilitation and the elimination of the death penalty. For those who are abused, physically or emotionally, through torture, slavery, <coughs> human trafficking, or unjust imprisonment, may their plight be acknowledged and concerted efforts be made to free them and bring health and wholeness to their lives. For those who are sick, lonely, or dying, May we be attentive and responsive to their needs by reaching out to them and accompanying them with compassion and care. Let us join our prayer together. All seeing and ever present God, each person is precious in your sight, and you hear the cry of the poor. Keep us attentive to the needs of one another, that sharing our grief and pain, our joy and hope, we may work together for a world where the rights and dignity of every person is respected, and all live joyfully in peace justice and freedom. We ask, we ask this, Jesus, For the care of creation. For our earth, with its lavish but limited resources, and its enthralling but fragile beauty. May men and women of all nations recognize our relatedness to the earth and all its creatures and our responsibility to be advocates and caretakers. For an end to pollution and all human activities that contaminate the air, destroy rivers and forests, and bring about the extinction of animal life. For the development of cultivation and construction practices that respect the land and water and foster the preservation of plant life, animal life, and water resources. For the joint efforts of nations to restore the ecological soundness of Mother Earth by prudently and effectively addressing the causes of global warming and the devastation of natural resources and animal life. Let us join our prayer together. Creating and life-sustaining God, your creation is blessed with beauty and is rich in many and varied fruits. You call us with all our sisters and brothers to collaborate in stewardship, in caring for our fragile planet. Give us wisdom to tend earth carefully and to be faithful partners with your continuing work of creation. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our brother. Amen. Were you there when they crucified?
Sometimes he causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you
My sisters and brothers, let us pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy to come under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you have restored us to life through the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ. Preserve within us the work of your mercy, that being united with his paschal mystery, we may never cease to offer you faithful service. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Please bow your heads in blessing. Lord, send down abundant blessing upon your people who have recalled your son's death in the sure hope of rising again. Grant them pardon and renew their strength, deepen their faith, and confirm in them your work of eternal redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord.